Hey there, folks. I'm meteorologist Matt Barentine. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on the tropics. We do have a couple of issues out there, and you see them kind of painted in uh, orange and yellow here across the tropics. We're looking at the tropical weather outlook here, and what we're seeing is two areas. One that's painted in orange out in the middle of the Atlantic. I am definitely not concerned with that one because it's going to stay in the middle of the Atlantic. And the other one is that yellow area in the Caribbean. Right now, the, 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 the risk of that developing is over the next seven days is only 20%, which seems pretty low, right? But the thing is uh, where it's at and the fact that we expect it to take longer than seven days to develop. I'm having some problems with my computer. It has decided to completely lock up on me so I'm doing my best so just bear with me a second I'll get this thing up and running uh, once again we're keeping an eye on two areas out in the tropics uh, both have the uh, the ability to become tropical issues here for us but the main one I'm keeping an eye on is going to be the one that's down in the Caribbean uh, that could work its way into the Gulf of Mexico but that'll be late next week we're talking more than seven days out here for this uh, to come to to come to fruition. So uh, you could also notice I've got the sea surface temperatures up there. You can see how red the Gulf and the Caribbean is. It is uh, very warm waters to say the least. So it is uh, just rocket fuel for any system that would try to develop down there uh, would have a certainly would have the risk of doing a rapid intensification. All right, let me see if I can't get this thing to work now. All right, getting there. Um, so anyway, once again, we're talking about down into uh, next week. We're talking mid to late next week before this would actually happen and reach its way towards us. And I am sorry, folks, but I am having complete meltdown on my computers if I can get it to work at all. <laughs> all right, here we go. I think I finally got it. I think it's fine. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, uh, so you can see the one in the in the, in the Caribbean is only 20 percent, but that's seven days. If this was a 10-day outlook, that would be much much higher. The reason is it's just going to take some time for all of this to develop. What we're looking at here is something called a Central American gyre forming. It's going to start forming here over the weekend and into next week. And what that is a very broad area of low pressure across the tropics, uh, particularly across Central America. And these form. Um, all the time in the spring and fall. These are, it's not unusual to have one of these form. These are very common. And what they tend to do is they tend to spawn other tropical systems. Sometimes they'll spawn them on the Pacific side and sometimes they'll spawn them on the uh, Gulf side or the Caribbean side. So uh, this one we're going to be watching out for uh, some areas of low, an area of low pressure developing somewhere in here. Obviously there's a big broad area of low pressure but it, uh, what happens is a tighter, smaller area of low pressure will sometimes spawn out of this. And where that spawns out of this big, broad area it will be super critical because obviously if it spawns over here to the west and then the storm that spawns out of that moves to the north, it's going to be ending up more off to the west. And more in the center here, maybe more to the central Gulf Coast. More on to the east side, maybe around Cozumel and that could take it up more towards the peninsula of Florida. So wherever a possible low forms out of this big broad area, that will be very key on determining what exactly happens. And the reason why I'm going through these different scenarios with this is because I'm already seeing a lot of stuff being posted on social media because we have these model runs. We have two, two really good models and there's some other models, but two main models and the thing is, those are run four times a day. And two models four times a day, that's eight models a day. And when you're looking at something that's 10, 11, 12 days out, something tropical, you get a lot of different possibilities on these models. And we call these models, meteorologists do, we call them guidance. Because they can give you some guidance, but they're not gospel. And what happens on, with social media Somebody gets that 10-day uh, GFS model, plop, puts it out there on social media. Look, hur you know, hurricane hitting Panama City next Friday. Okay, well, the, the model run before that had it as a tropical storm going down towards Tampa. The model run before that broke it apart. The next model run may take it to Houston. That's how off these things can be t 10, 12 days out. They can be way, way off. 
for meteorologists, they can help us out kind of what it's showing us is that there's a signal out there. That there's a signal that there's going to be likely something trying to develop out there. And then we can look at the different possibilities, but we don't ever want to focus in on any one possibility 10, 11, 12 days out. Because invariably, it'll be wrong. Now, if you throw enough darts to the board, eventually you'll be right. I mean, that's the way these, you know, Facebook works. So somebody gets it, if one of these is right, they'll go back and crow about it. But they don't know they're right right now. Nobody knows where it's going to end up or if it even fully forms. There's a lot of question marks still happening here. The, the, the few things I'll say that are for sure, one is that that, that gyre, the big broad area low pressure, that's going to form here over the weekend. I no doubt about that. When those do form, they often spawn tropical systems. Often, very often. So it's a good chance that we will see something form off of this. It's just where will it end up going? I don't know, and nobody else knows for sure at right now either. What I'm putting out there are some possibilities, and what we need to be doing is basically just watching. You know, if, if you're still not fully ready for hurricane season for some reason, you probably should go ahead and get ready this weekend. Will this come to us? Probably not. Most likely not. Just going off of statistics, right? But I don't know that for sure. It could easily come right up into Mobile Bay or Pensacola, whatever. It could do that as a hurricane. That's a possibility. But it's not the only possibility. There's a lot of possibilities with this as of yet. And we'll narrow down those possibilities as we go through time. So that's the main thing. Uh, the temperatures, this is, like I said, what worries me with it one way or the other. We have temperatures and out, out there in the, the mid-80s all across the Central Gulf. That is just absolute rocket fuel. Um, anything above 84 is possibilities of rapid intensification, and the whole Gulf is above 84 just about. So it, just full-on possibilities for intensification with any system that, that gets in the Gulf. So that's, you know, it's concerning if anything forms out there. Here are the storm names. So um, we've been through seven storms so far, uh, all the way through Gordon. The next name is Helene. Now, remember, we do have that one in the middle of the Atlantic that we're watching. That'll probably form first. So very well could become Helene. And then that will leave Isaac for whatever is happening down there in the Gulf if that forms. So, and here's the thing. The eye storms are always the bad storms. How many, how many eye storms have we been through? Ivan, Ida, uh, uh, Dahlia. I mean, I, I, eye storm after eye storm after this. More eye storms have been retired than any other letter. Okay, so that means like the, the most, the worst storms of all times, so not all necessarily the worst storm of all time, but just that has been the worst letter of all time as far as tropical systems are concerned. So it's, that's not a good omen either, I guess. It's just uh, we'll be watching out for the next ice storm here. Uh, so anyway, that's what we've got going right now. Here's the thing. There is nothing, there's the tropics right now down the, look at the Gulf, it's just totally clear. The Northern Caribbean, totally clear. Uh, there is some storminess down near Panama, but that's not a, anything tropical. So the, there's nothing there now. That's the thing. This is going to be more than a week out. We're talking, um, you know, end of next week before something would form out there. So we've got lots of time to watch this. That's also why when you look here, um, you see that it's only 20%. And it's marked up in yellow in the Caribbean. That's because it's, it's seven days. If this was a 10-day outlook, it would be higher than that with that percentage um, because it's probably going to take a little longer than seven days for this to develop. So that's what we're looking at. Once again, i got two out there, one in the middle of the Atlantic, one in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, we're going to be watching these very closely over the next several days, watching the, for this possible development, watching for what happens if it develops, and then, of course, watching where it could you know, ultimately end up. The one thing I didn't put on here is, you know, easily looking at the modeling here, showing a low pressure area developing off the coast of Mexico down on the Pacific side. And that happens. These guys have, at, at times have produced tropical systems on either side at the same time. It can happen. These things kind of rotate around each other, and it's just a, it's just an area of when these when these develop these Central American gyres, it creates a large area of storminess uh, that can develop into tropical systems. So that's this is what we're going to be watching. 
This is once again, this what you're looking at is next Wednesday. So we're talking a full week away or longer before we start to see any real development down into the Gulf. So we got plenty of time to track and watch. You stay tuned to Fox 10. We'll take you through it the whole way through. Thank you so much for joining us here on Fox 10. Hope you have yourself a great day.